Hey guys, Uniservo here. Well, I was clearing some wall space to put up some new shelving because I'm trying to get this place organized. And of course there's stuff in the way. This, this was in the way, but this is cool. So I'm gonna make a video about it. From the title, you can uh, see this is the, uh, a piece at least of the radar of a Bomark missile. Now the Bomark was essentially the US's first uh, long-range surface-to-air missile intended for shooting down bombers and other aircraft. Um, it was an Air Force device, and it was designed in the 1950s, got fielded in eh, 59, I believe. It was used by the U.S. Air Force and also by the Canadians. Uh, the, the missile went into service and lasted into the 60s, I believe, and not a, not a very long service life, simply because the threat of bombers had more or less fallen to the wayside because, well, ICBMs. Obviously, you couldn't shoot down an ICBM with this thing. However, the bombers were still a threat, so the Air Force kept them around for a while, and also there were other similar devices like the uh, Nike Nike missile system as well. But anyway, the Bomark missile, Boeing and the Michigan Aeronautical Research Center, Bomark, uh, they were the designers of this and they chose Westinghouse to make the radar. And this is the business end of the radar, ANDPN 34. Yes, it's one of those rare Ds for you, you AN guys which means pilotless carrier, because obviously no one is actually riding the missile. <laughs> anyway, um, this, well, it's in bad shape, and this will be the first video about this radar. Now, this is just the AS-L mount, the azimuth elevation mount, and basically it's kind of the mechanical portion of the radar. It's, it's, it's the dish, obviously and the way to steer the dish because well this was used for basically final intercept of well whoever you're shooting down and uh operationally these bow marks were guided by the sage system but for final intercept they switched to this radar the andpn 34 uh, for the last few miles, well, it was more than a few miles, but so to speak, well, the, for, for like the fine, <laughs> the fine intercept to, uh, to, to, to do the job. Um, this is, like I said, the dish with as L mount. Now I also have the control electronics for this. That will be in the second video. And the reason why I'm not doing that right now is because, well, as you can see, this thing is, um, it's not in good shape. It was stored in a damp environment in a warehouse for God knows how many years. And uh, a lot of the connector, or con well, connectors too, but a lot of the um, hardware, well, as you can see, it's pretty rusty. Oh gosh, what a job it's going to be to clean this thing up. Uh, but the, uh, the screws to the control electronics box, they're in pretty bad shape too. So currently they're sitting in penetrating oil. Eventually, if I can get the darn screws open, well, we'll make a video about that because it's full of a lot of electronic goodness. You know, that good 1960-era goodness. Anyway, we're going to take a look at the, uh, this end, <laughs> the business end of the radar. Now, the dish is about two feet in diameter. I'll put my hand down and you can see it's not huge. It's an X-band device that's 10 gigahertz, which was... Pretty standard back in the day. Um, hey, it's still used a bit. Um, uh, kind of a standard radar band for aircraft stuff. You can see the lovely green, uh, what is that, zinc chromate finish. Pretty standard for aircraft stuff. See the horn. This probably spins to get the spiral scan, but, uh, you know, it's, 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 seized and or pinned. Yeah, this thing, you know, it's it's being an Azel mount, it, it kind of goes in the X and Y directions. As you can see the, uh, 
kind of a, what would you call that, like a gimbal or trunnion type of deal going on. With uh, you can see the big arm here that goes down, and we'll look on. We'll look underneath because there's lots of fun stuff down there. That's where all the, the actual moving bits get their the, the get their torque from, or if, or whatever you want to say. Um, we'll look on the underside, but uh, it's currently pinned for shipment. You can see the wood from the crate, and yeah, the the crate that this thing was in was in terrible shape. It was ripped open because. Well, unfortunately, the place I got it from, they dealt in radar stuff, and they apparently needed the magnetron or something like that. So the, the whole the RF section with the magnetron and modulator and all that kind of good stuff, gone. I never found it. I never found it in the warehouse. I looked for it. Um, chances are I didn't miss it. Uh, it was probably, probably long gone by the time I got into the warehouse. Oh, well, such is life. This is what I got look at some of the tags now of course this thing is not going to say dpn 34 anywhere on it being the uh well kind of sensitive nature but there are some kind of cool tags here you can see uh the air arm of westinghouse and the, the old westinghouse logo there and uh just a bunch of very cryptic numbers because they weren't about to say exactly what this thing was you know just in case and yeah a lot of part numbers you can see there a little uh, thing that shows the uh, the angle, and there's another one. There's the other joint there, and yeah, there's all sorts of servo stuff happening because this is a feedback feedback system. Then we got cylinders like this, which uh, I'm not entirely certain what that is. These bolts here is how it mounts. Oh yeah, and I, I got to say. I, Clearly, I have no information on this, and it is probably fairly unlikely I will ever find any real hard hard documentation on the real hard tech tech stuff, simply because of the uh, the uh, you know sensitive nature of this stuff. You know these these uh, Bomark missiles were capable of uh, a nuclear warhead, although nearly all of them were conventional, because you know generally a conventional War, warhead will, will do a job on a bomber but hey if you want to shoot down the entire squadron you know back in the 60s yeah just use a nuke and yeah we've got a whole bunch of connectors and things like that that i have no idea the you know anything really about what they are and you know i'm, I'm assuming that's you know control system uh signals for steering the antenna around and yeah, these things were used for essentially the the uh, the, the final approach uh, of the missile. Uh, the the initial flight of the missile, uh, they were controlled by Sa the Sage system, but Sage couldn't get so was not so accurate that it could actually do the last few miles. Well, more than a few miles, but you know the the very last bits of the intercept. There we have the. Uh, X-band waveguide nozzle there. And I don't know if we can see, but it, it winds around in there. And there are obviously flexible joints, rotary waveguide joints, and all sorts of stuff to get it out the top. Or front, I guess that would re really be. Yeah, look at that. Look at all that corrosion. You know, this is... I'm not sure what it is. This thing is not terribly heavy. You know, it's conceivable that that's magnesium or a magnesium aluminum alloy i am not sure uh you know, see even there's this connector that i have no idea where it goes to um i need to do more research on this but you know the the, the various history books about bomark um you know it's mostly about the bigger picture not the, the little details but yeah, it's pinned, so it's not going anywhere. But if it was not pinned, and I'm actually not sure where the pins are. They're basically locking pins for the uh, for shipping this thing, um, because you don't want the you don't want the dish just flopping around, you know, in the back of the truck. Um, but yeah, it's 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 currently going nowhere. Well, tell you what, let's look at the bottom of this because you can see, yeah, there's, there's these big arms here. And those are actually mechanical linkages 
for actually steering the antennas because what we have here, I think, are just servo uh, feedback, probably Selsons, but it gets interesting underneath. So let's cut, o cut over there. Okay, I flipped the thing. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I flipped the thing on its side so we can take a look underneath. Now, you'll see that there's not a heck of a lot of electrical stuff in here because this is mostly hydraulic. And the reason why it is hydraulic, and you can see the lines here and you know some of the arrows for flow, is you know, they, were, they weren't fooling around with this, this, <laughs> this dish assembly. If they wanted the dish to move, they made it move. And the way to do that uh, and still be, you know, fairly small, if you will, is to use hydraulics. And there's the big pump. You know, come to think of it, you know, I bet you that's a reservoir. Uh, because it certainly looks like, uh, certainly looks like a hydraulic line right there, doesn't it? Right here, you can see uh, where those linkages end up. And uh, I'm not that big on, uh, or knowledgeable on hydraulic stuff. Get a better focus there. I bet you, yeah, that's the motor for the pump. I bet you that is the pump. And there are probably some flow meters in here. You know, maybe, maybe that thing. Um, because, you know, this is all a controlled, uh, control system, a feedback control system. You know, they, when they wanted the, the, the antenna to steer, they weren't screwing around. So they, they wanted as much power as they could to steer the antenna because, you know, remember this was, this radar was used for final, final intercept to the target. And, uh, you didn't have much time. It's, you were closing in and this, this was a very, very fast missile. So, you know, it, this, these radars is in, in, in actual service were used for a very, very short amount of time. But so they had to make that time count. So yes, it's a hydraulic system, probably oil in there somewhere, uh, or maybe it's been drained. I have no idea. And yeah, there are all these boxes that, you know, you know I, God knows what that is. I don't know what that is. And that thing made by Lear. Oh, it actually says coordinate converter. So that's part of the feedback mechanism. And we can see, yeah, high precision pot right there. All sorts of mystery stuff. We can get a, uh, I guess from this angle, we can get a pretty good look at the, uh, the back of the antenna. And uh, it's actually a pretty stiff antenna made out of aluminum. Sometimes you find the, uh, these radar dishes and they're actually like aluminized uh, fiberglass, which is great for lightweightness, but uh, you, you, they're, they're pretty fragile actually. But this one is actually pretty strong. Well, look, at the, uh, look at the casting on the back of that. Wow. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Reser reservoir. Hydraulic. So, yeah, that is the reservoir. And maybe that's the fill port. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. This is the first video about this ANDPN-34 radar from a Bomark missile. Uh, I will try and do the second video about the control box at some point soon. But that's going to kind of uh, depend on me getting those screws off because otherwise it's just a weird looking aluminum box. You know, all the goodness is inside circuit boards and all sorts of good stuff like that. So, uh, hey, if you, any of you guys uh, uh, worked on these things, let me know. That's one of the great things about some of these uh, videos and YouTube in general. Occasionally, I'll get a guy that worked on something I made a video about, even maybe two or three years after I posted the video and said, hey, I, I used to work on, on those things. And hey, it's great. Information, it's great. And of course, if anyone has any technical information on, on, on this uh, ANDPN34, 
that would be great. Uh, you know, and, and thinking, I probably should check the uh, Library of the Historical Electronics Museum in Baltimore. They might, actually. Um, I think they might actually even have one of these antennas as well. Uh, so, yeah, I will try and get that second part of this video out. Uh, all I can say is, you know, don't hold your breath because, well, you know how I am. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, uh, as soon as I can, we'll do a teardown video. Oh, I hate the word teardown, don't I? But, you know, YouTube likes that. Uh, of the control system. And, yeah, I'm go cry in my beer for not actually having the RF section. So, hope you like the video. And, uh, leave your comments, leave your likes, notic notifications, blah, blah, this, that, and the other thing. And, hey, if you would uh, like to see more content, if you like this... I do have a Patreon uh, account, and hey, why not throw a buck, buck a month, even more, two dollars a month? I don't care. It's you know, well, obviously the more the better, the more the better. But I appreciate every last penny of it because well, times are tough right now. They have been for a while. All right, hey, I'm gonna go check those screws and see if they've loosened up a little bit. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.